Um, Jamil, how, how excited are you at the next two hours unfolding and watching Zach crush it on a treadmill? Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm super excited. We got some great guests lined up and um, yeah, we're still early on in the race, so to speak. So it'll be um, hopefully relatively unexciting actually um, for Zach's sake as he kind of gets through this portion of it and just kind of uh, gets through some miles. And um, yeah, it's always, um, you know, I've got a lot of experience at Desert Solstice watching the runners out there. And yeah, you hope at this point that it's, it's relatively um, easy and calm right now and as we uh, move towards later in the race. Okay, cool. Well, I'm going to say goodbye, guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure being here and, and joining you all. Uh, Tommy, Jackie, Michael, thank you for your amazing input. It's been, uh, it's been a real pleasure to, to spend two hours on a Saturday watching uh, Zach on a treadmill. It has been. Thank you for having me. Yeah, okay. yeah thank you, guys. Thank you, Michael. And, and Jamil, I'm going to hand over to you. Have a, have a fantastic couple of hours and I'll be tuning in myself and, and watching it unfold. And, uh, and, and it's going to be amazing to see what happens today. As, as you say, it's still very early on and you want Zach to be feeling good at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for uh, your time, Ian. Have a great day. Thank you. And you. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Thanks, Ian. Bye. All right, just wanted to welcome everyone um, to, I guess, my time slot here for the next couple of hours. Um, we've got some great guests lined up. Um, I'll kind of run through them real quick so you guys know what to expect for these next couple hours. Um, looks like we've got um, Amanda Basham right now. Um, yep, there's our little times, our little uh, screen here. So we've got uh, Amanda Basham, uh, ultra runner, coming up with us first. We've got Jeff Burns, he's an ultra runner, also a PhD in kinesiology. Uh, Jeff Browning, uh, he's an ultra runner, a coach as well, and Ian Sharman, who is also a coach and an ultra runner. So uh, we've got no shortage of things to talk about here. Um, I know a lot of us know each other in the sport, so it's going to be a lot of fun catching up a little bit as, uh, yeah, I kind of miss all these guys. I haven't seen them in a while, no races to go to. Um, so yeah, let's just jump into it. Amanda, looks like you're on here. Uh, yeah. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm glad to see everyone. Does yeah, feel haven't, cool. haven't seen you in a while. I can't even, I don't even know when I've seen you last. Yeah, I don't know. And I feel like I usually see you a lot going to all your races. Yeah, for sure. Um, how have you been holding up with uh, the quarantine and everything that's been going on? Um, and, and are you in Colorado now or Utah? Um, so I'm in Colorado. So I, I just bought a house um, kind of right before all the COVID stuff happened, which yay me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was okay. It's all working out. Um, but yeah, I bought it in Arvada, Colorado, which is like west of Denver, close to Golden. Um, but I spent the, the majority of quarantining in Minnesota so far. Um, so I've only been here maybe a week, week and a half. Gotcha. Um, yeah, it's been good though. Colorado uh, loosened up a lot of their restrictions and um, a lot of the parks and stuff weren't closed. So at least for like ultra runners and just people who like to be outside, it was, wasn't bad. <laughs> so yeah, people can, you can still recreate, get out there. Um, have you all, have you been incorporating a treadmill at all? Um, do you normally run on a treadmill that much? I know that, um, obviously Zach is, uh, using that today for his attempt. Yeah. So, I mean, I use it year round, um, a lot in the winter, especially because, I don't like to post hole and sludge through the snow. And so I like to get my vert and my speed work on the treadmill, definitely in the winter. And then sometimes we have some random um, days where either I can't get to the mountains or uh, it's just bad afternoon storm or whatever. And so I'll use the treadmill for that. And then um, also in Minnesota, I mean, it's like, so flat <laughs> so everywhere i think um I, I went to afton state park a lot i was in minneapolis um so i got an okay amount of vert there but any other time was all of vert was on the treadmill and so to be able to do that in a flat area is really nice to have that yeah um i know i have one of the treadmills kind of similar to zach's there and that's kind of been the surprising thing for me is how much vert you can get on a treadmill you don't think of it normally and I know early on in my running career, um, I, you know, I wasn't really 
too interested in treadmill running. I would do it here and there. Um, but once I got the one that has the incline on it, it's really been a game changer for me personally. It sounds like yeah. you as well. Yeah. I mean, I was never a person. I'd, I'd say that I run less on the treadmill now, but I've always been a, just a runner, like whether it's road, mountains, treadmill, whatever. I just like, I enjoy running. I enjoy training the whole process of it. So if I need a vert day or speed work day and it's just not going to happen outside, I'll get on the treadmill. So um, I'm going to go against it. I, I enjoy kind of all types. Yeah. What, so I'm just curious, what's the furthest you've ever run on a treadmill? I'm assuming not 100 miles. Definitely not. Um, probably like 25 miles. Okay. Nice. Um, yeah, an okay amount, but definitely not 100 miles. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> Zach is impressive. I don't know how he does that stuff. That's a real like mental, um, just a mental challenge for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is this something you would ever consider doing? Well, it's interesting because it's so, it's so much time on the treadmill, but it's also really interesting. And I'd like to see if I could actually like mentally handle it. Now you're a coach also, is that correct? Yeah. Um, and so what, do you ever work with some of your athletes on that, on using a treadmill or what kind of things do you prescribe in terms of that? So I'd say majority of people use a treadmill at least half the time, maybe more, um, because they're mountain runners, but they also have lives. So, you know, they've got a nine to five job, they've got a few kids, they're married, maybe they don't live right to where they can just run out the door to the mountains. And so a lot of them use the treadmill definitely for their speed work, um, some big long vert days. Um, I mean, at least 50% of the time, sometimes more. Right on. Um, what do you, uh, do you have any commentary on Zach right now, how he's looking? Have you been tuning in or earlier this morning or did you just jump in recently to see how he's doing? So I've been working on trying to sleep in. I'm usually like a 6 a.m. -er, um, and then I don't always get enough sleep. So I'm just now seeing him. Um, I kind of got in, gone on a few minutes early, but I mean, he looks great. I never have any doubts with Zach. He's like, when he does something, he just does it right. I mean, yeah, he, and everyone has some bad days and, and he's had days that weren't up to his standard. Um, wouldn't necessarily call them bad, but um, as a professional runner, I also understand when like you just don't reach your goal, then you, you feel like it's really bad. But most of the time, like Zach shows up and he's ready and he does exactly what he's going to do. Now, it sounds like nutrition wise, he's um, aiming for, he says around 40 grams of carbohydrates per hour. Um, nutrition wise, how important is that when you're doing 100 mile races and what kind of things do you use? Um, I'm definitely more of a high carbohydrate person. Um, Zach is really, really good with his nutrition and really dialed in. And I know he ups his carbohydrate for actual competition versus like his day to day or like just racing. Um, but a lot of it too, it is adapting. So you can, you can train your stomach to do a lot of different things. And I've tried a lot of different things as well. And I think it's a combination of your body and what you train to do. Um, and I've found through several years of running, um, that I'm better with high carbohydrate, but also not like straight sugary gels or candy. Um, so something with a little bit of fat for hundred milers, um, not a crazy amount and you still want, so you kind of want a good even amount of the fat and carbohydrate. So if you have too much crappy sugar, like just straight candy or a typical gel, um, you're just going to bonk a lot harder. So you get those spikes up and down. Whereas like you have a little bit of fat and something that's a little more natural and going to digest a little slower. Um, you're going to just kind of stay stable. Um, and it's a lot, it's a lot easier to come back from. So if you kind of slack on calories a little bit, you're not in such a hole that you're going to death march for 30 minutes while what you just ate is trying to come back and save you. <laughs> so 
um, yeah, so it's really important. Nutrition is huge for hunter milers. So yeah, don't eat as much candy as I do during races, man. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're in that state where like everything feels like it's not working and you just got to go for what sounds good. So that definitely happens. And I do eat like cookies and croissants, um, but I'll eat them kind of in between my spring gels. Um, so I kind of even things out. And it's more like I've had the good amount of energy that I need as far as the amount of calories and fat and all of that. But then if I need an extra little burst, um, like quick carbs that are just going to burn real fast, so I'll eat a, a croissant or a cookie. Yeah. And I know I'm really excited to get more into the diet stuff with Jeff Browning a little bit later, talking about the, the high fat, low carb diet. Um, and I even just saw, um, there's a runner, Michael McKnight from Utah. Did you see, he just ran a hundred miles on no calories. He did. So yeah, Mike is also nuts, but he's just like, he does it. <laughs> his body's adapted to it because he does yeah. it so well every day. And it's, it's just like Jeff. It's just like Zach. Like you can do that. It's probably going to be better for you with how dialed they are, but it also goes into do you, like, I like to enjoy my carbohydrates. Um, <laughs> yeah, I here. like pizza and some. <laughs> I just some ate candy. pizza last night for like the third time this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I think it is interesting. Like a lot can, a lot of things can work for a lot of people. There's really not one size fits all and I know me for nutrition wise, especially at hundred milers, I like to have an option of things. And, and yeah, sometimes I definitely don't like to eat too much too early in races. I like to kind of ease into things, but yeah, it's super intriguing. Um, and I'm definitely excited to, to chat more, um, with, uh, um, with Jeff later. So it looks yeah. like, uh, Zach's making a, a treadmill change here. He's been doing this, um, every once in a while. So maybe just to mix things up a little bit. Are they the same um, treadmill? What's that? Are they the same treadmill? I think they are. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's two of the same one. So. Huh. I wonder why he's doing that. Do you know? I'm not exactly sure. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. I'd like to ask him. We can't really ask him though, huh? <laughs> yeah. I think we might be able to ask him some questions at some point. Um, but yeah, I think he's pretty focused right now. Yeah. Just kind of getting after it. Um, Let's see. So he's currently going for under 12, right? Yeah. So um, record wise, the treadmill world record set by Dave Proctor in 12 hours, 32 minutes. And then, um, I mean, also his overall record of 11 hours, 19 minutes um, is something he's aiming for as well. So okay. um, yeah, those are kind of the two major marks and then planning to continue on all the way up to 12 hours as well. Okay, just see how far it gets. Yeah, exactly. Well, because there's a record too at 12 hours. Oh, so okay. He can, so he can hit both records. Um, oh. So kind of the reason that, um, yeah, Zach is doing this is um, he planned for doing a track 100 miler in London, um, the Centurion 100. And so he's, um, yeah, coming in on this one. So it looks like we have uh, Christina here. Do you have an update for us? I do. I have some, some interesting facts. Um, you guys are just kind of talking about being able to ask Zach questions. So if anybody has questions for Zach, they can reach out at sffuels.sf um, on Instagram and send those over to their inbox there. And then they will get those questions to Zach and then he can answer those for us. So um, just that little bit of information there because I know a couple of people have asked about it. Um, then we'll get those questions answered. Um, I just want to uh, point out again that, um, you know, that they are, we do have a donor matching up to $10,000 for the um, fight for the forgotten. So get those donations in and congrats to our winners this hour. We've got the Coros pod, uh, reach out to us on social media and we will get that out to you. And then once again, tr uh, Nordic track, it does have a, uh, um, competition or not a competition. They have a giveaway today as well. So if you reach out to them on Instagram and see, look over on their page, they're going to tell you how you can win one of those. So we'll be able to, um, get you guys entered in for that. 
then we do have an awesome guest speaker coming on right now for a little bit. Um, it is the, he's the 24 hour world record holder for the treadmill. Um, I'm not going to say his last name because I will slaughter it, but his first name is Born. And so he should be popping on here in just a moment as well. We're going to just do a little chat with him and, and kind of talk about what um, kind of, oh, I guess he's not on anymore. So while he pops back on, um, then we do have Tim Reynolds, who is um, running today. Um, I believe he is planning to do a 21K run today with Zach and um, getting that all done. Oh, nope. Oh, sorry. Get in, I'm getting some updates. Okay, so it looks like um, Born is back on. Hi, Tim. I can hear you, Tim. How's it going? Yeah, good. You still plan? You're still planning to do the 21K today? I know you had to had to fight some challenges. We are trying to get Born up and going. He is um, <laughs> Norway, I believe. Oh, there he is. How are you? I'm well, it's exciting to watch Zach run. Yeah, and so oh, yeah. Uh, Lewis was telling me that you are you hold the 24 yeah. hour world record on the treadmill. Is that correct? Awesome. And are you, are you going for any kind of records today or just running with Zach? No, I'm just running with Zach today. Awesome. What, what did you find is probably your biggest challenge on doing the 24 hours on the treadmill? Yeah, it was back in uh, 2018 in October uh, in Bergen, west coast of Norway. Did 264.52 kilometers. Wow. That's the long ways on a treadmill. You, yeah. you should probably just sign up for one of the backyard ultras that are happening. Yeah, I want to do the big dog. Yeah. But I don't have the gold toy. <laughs> well, I know that they are doing another um, with one of the quarantine yeah. backyard ultras, and I want to say it's in July. You should look at it. Yeah, is it, is it another workout? Yeah, yep, it's another virtual one. I believe we actually have, um, I think Dave Proctor is one of the people putting it on. I believe he's on later today. But yeah, yeah well, thanks for joining us today and, and taking time out of your day to, to, to reach out to us and get on. So I hope you have a great run for the rest of your day. Thank you. All right, bye. All right, Jamil and Amanda, I will give it back to you guys. Thanks for letting me cut in. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks so much for that update. Yeah, it's really cool to see a lot of other people running with Zach today, just kind of tuning in. It's like, yeah, yeah, someone cutting in there. Um, so yeah, kind of what I was saying right before um, that update we had. Um, Amanda, what are some of the most creative things that you've seen from runners out there in terms of this quarantine and people getting creative? I know this is one example with Zach going for this um, virtual record on his treadmill, but what have you seen out there that you've enjoyed? So um, one of the guys I coach, he is probably the, he's along Zach's line of like mental toughness. And he has this one mile hill outside of his house. He did the one mile hill up and down uh, for 30 miles, I believe. Uh, he <laughs> was nuts. I can't remember how much bird it was, but he said people, it's like right on a highway and it, and people were just thinking he was so crazy all day, like had all his gear on so that he didn't have to stop much and just back and forth on this one mile hill. Um, but he's also like the kind of person, like he'll run, you know, treadmill, mountains, road, whatever. He just wants to run. Like he's just a runner and he likes crazy creative stuff. Um, and so I think, you know, quarantine hasn't been too bad for those people <laughs> trying to figure out like cool treadmill challenges and stuff outside of your house where you have a quarter mile loop. Um, yeah, it's been, 
uh, interesting seeing people come up with challenges. And what is, what's really cool is like quarantine could have went a lot worse and people could have just said, well, I'm not going to do anything. But instead it, I've found that it kind of made people relax and then get really creative and like figure out ways to just make things really fun and use what they have. So, you know, most people have a treadmill. They're not they're You can't, there's no rules against running in your house. So you can do anything on that all day. Um, or in their backyard, like 50 meter sprints, you know, back and forth, um, to add up to 40 miles, because of course, ultra runners always have to run more than 30 miles, no matter what the situation is. Um, so yeah, so people are funny, but I think it's been cool to see people be really positive about it and come up with really creative challenges instead of just be upset that races aren't happening and might as well not run, you know? Yeah, I've been blown away by just people with their creativity and their drive. Um, just, yeah, running literally around their kitchen table or um, there. I don't know if you caught this one. There was a guy in Japan, I believe, who ran. He ran around a tree, just little tiny circles, and it had a decent hill. It was only a few feet each time, but because the loop was so short, when you added it up, he ran 100 miles around this tree and added up to more gain, like as much gain as UTMB. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like, I think after 80K or something, he added, he kept adding obstacles. So he would add a log and a branch and other things. And it was just like the most ridiculous thing. And I think at the very end, his family or something brought this like cardboard archway. Like he's like <laughs> at the end. So yeah, it's been pretty amazing to see what people are doing. <laughs> Looks like we have a 20 mile milestone that Zach just hit here. Um, that's two hours, 23 minutes in. So he is moving right along here. I guess if we do, do some math, what would we be out to? Looks like he jumped off. He might be doing a little quick bathroom break here at the 20 mile mark. So I guess we'll time him, see how long he takes to go uh, go to the potty. <laughs> yeah, that would be terrible if that caused him to go over 12 hours. It's an extra bathroom break. Yeah, I think I saw a chart of when he did his six days in the dome, or not six days in the dome, because he didn't, he wasn't doing that much. But when he was at that race where he set the record, which was um, on a track indoors, um, they had a chart of his, I think it'll come up here in a few minutes, um, tracking his progress and seeing what his latest mile was. Um, but I think he had like three bathroom breaks in total. So this one looks like his, I think he had one earlier. So hopefully he, uh, this might be, hopefully it's the last one for a while. He's going on about a minute here. We'll see. Uh, hopefully he comes back soon. Yeah. I think they always start out, uh, more often in the beginning kind of taper. Yeah, absolutely. Um, just for our viewers out there, I'm also monitoring the YouTube chat room a little bit here. So if you guys do have some questions for Amanda or me, um, feel free to, uh, ask them in there. Um, so how have you been affected with everything in the quarantine and shutdown? I'm sure you've had to adjust your schedule. Um, what do you have in mind personally? Are you, how are you staying motivated during this time? Um, you know, the first couple of weeks was kind of weird, just trying, trying to figure it out. But then um, it was cool to see everyone kind of, I mean, like we just said, like, get really creative and stay positive and kind of connect. It's, it's different, but connect more because, you know, that desire to like be around people and see people was there and you couldn't just go hang out with your friends. And so, so all these virtual events that have gotten, um, a lot of people involved in them where people are running on their treadmills in their own house, um, but all at the same time to kind of come together and feel like a part of a group. Um, that kind of stuff's made it a lot, a lot better and a lot more um, fun and interesting to just do some new things and not be um, maybe stressed out for being prepped for a big race or something. Um, I don't normally get super stressed out for races. I love racing. Um, I love the whole training process too, but it's really for the social aspect. Like I love to perform. Don't get me wrong. Like I will, 
I'll try to go out there and, and race as hard as I can, but it's because I'm, I'm there with all of these people who love to do the same thing and everyone's so stoked and, um, you know, race weekends are always just so full of energy. And then we all get to race on these beautiful trails that, um, we've been preparing to do and with our friends. And, um, so I do miss that for sure. Um, but it'll come back. And I think that in every situation, you just have to work with what you have. And right now we can do virtual stuff, you know, at home on our treadmills or now like some restrictions are lightening up so we can go outside. Um, I'm really lucky that Colorado has lightened up a lot. Um, tons of our trails are open and they're really not that packed. Like there's so many options here that you can find places where there aren't people. Um, and then on the weekends, I kind of avoid some of that stuff and maybe that's when I'd run at home. Um, yeah, so it's not been, it hasn't been bad. It's been really fun to just see the creativity and, um, you know, there's some hope for some races later in the year, uh, potentially run rabbit. So I'm kind of just focusing on that and hoping that that still happens. And if it doesn't, like what people also need to think about is that training to be at your best takes a long time. So if you, you know, we can focus say Western States 2021 and you can be training now for Western States 2021 and you're probably going to end up doing better because you're not overdoing it with all of these hard efforts at these races. You're relaxed because we're doing all these like fun, creative events. And then you're going to be so fit by the time that race comes. That's so a great perspective. Yeah. I think yeah, a couple of great points there. Number one, like ultra runners are just adaptable. Um, oh, looks like we have a quick progress update. We'll get right back to that thought. So it's 25, 21. And it looks like he is right in between um, his track time and Dave Proctor's time there. It looks like it's kind of trending right in the middle of both. So um, we'll keep you guys updated. We have these updates um, every once in a while as he goes through. And here you see, it looks like he had that quick break there that spiked it up. He had about a two minute bathroom break, um, but he is back at it now. Um, you can see, the white line behind there is his actual data from his track run. And you can see the line of Dave Proctor's treadmill. So he's still um, well under pace for that one there, average pace. Cool. So yeah, talking a little bit about the um, what's going on here um, with the situation. Ultra runners are adaptable. And yeah, I think it's a great point taking a step back and having a longer term goal, not trying to race and recover, race and recover. Um, can really set us up, I think, for when things do get back to normal. Um, yeah, I also think too, if if some fall events can happen, they're probably going to be stacked. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome, and everyone would just be so stoked to be there, you know. Yeah, just so grateful. I think. Yeah, and maybe you know, maybe it'll just bring out better performances in people. You know, you're less stressed. You're just thinking like, this is awesome, and just more grateful for it, and. Yeah, I mean, I think it'll be fun to see how stacked those races are. Well, yeah, speaking about like a run rabbit, I know they've tried to put together, you know, like some really big fields and if UTMB is out, I mean, that could be a pretty prime race right there. Oh, for sure. I hope it is. It'll be fun. <laughs> um, so you're going to be um, spending time in Colorado this summer then too, um, getting up into the mountains some more as well? Yeah, so I actually managed to do Quandry Peak already. Um, let's see, did that last week, I think. Um, so yeah, so some of the big stuff is already melted enough that you can do. Quandary, you can kind of do year round though. Um, but a lot of the snow was pretty minimal. Um, I know like Pikes Peak is doable. So there's a lot of good stuff already ready to go. Cool. Um, we had a quick question in the chat room here. I'm curious what Zach's fueling strategy is today. Um, and I'm going off some pre-prepared stuff that he sent out. Um, but when he is, he says that for races, um, he's targeting around 40 grams of carbohydrate per hour um, using uh, the S fuels, I'm sure. Um, so you can see he'll be grabbing his bottle there every once in a while. Um, I'm sure it's mixed in there, kind of getting his calories in. Yeah, and it looks like he, um, someone else in the comments said the X, X some, uh, yeah. 
and some electrolytes as well. So cool. Um, let's see, we might have another guest here in a little bit. Um, how, how do you think he's looking overall here, Amanda? Kind of the same as when we hopped on here so far. Well, I can't see him now. Oh, there really? Okay, now I can. Um, yeah, I mean, he's looking just as strong. Um, maybe the bathroom break helped. <laughs> Yeah, he looks like he's wiping his screen down a little bit there. So he's probably sweating pretty good. Maybe they, uh, I know Michael Wardian was jumping on earlier, uh, telling him to keep cool. And that's obviously important. So yeah, hopefully they're cranking that AC down and uh, keeping nice and cool there. I know um, we had a heat wave here in Phoenix. Um, Zach is in Phoenix, for those of you just tuning in, um, which is also where I'm at. But he, um, we had a crazy heat wave like a week ago. It's like 108 already, but now it's kind oh, of yeah. back off. So um, I think we're maybe in the upper 80s. So outside temperatures aren't too crazy right now. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was uh, it was hot for a while. Yeah, that's crazy. It hit like 70 here and I felt like it was over 100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm like, how is it already 108 in early May? It's not cool. <laughs> yeah. You know what's weird though? It seemed like, at least for Colorado, like, Boulder got the most snow that they've gotten in several years, but things are already melting and it didn't really stick around. So the weather's just been really weird. Like they just, just got snow? Um, just for the winter. So this oh, the winter, winter in general, yeah, okay. Yeah, was like one of the biggest snowy winters, like in terms of amount of snow. But um, last year, the mountains were covered way longer than this year. Like things are already doable. So for those of you guys just tuning in now, um, just want to update you on how Zach is, what Zach is shooting for. The um, current 100 mile treadmill world record is um, set by Dave Proctor in 12 hours, 32 minutes. And that's an average pace of seven minutes, 30 seconds per mile. So that is um, the main goal that Zach is shooting for today. And, um, but he's also got his own record out there that uh, he might be going for 11 hours, 19 minutes. <laughs> 